There we go. All right, so what I'm going to talk about is I teach a web design class, a web development class for students who are communications and journalism students. They're not technical. They think they're technical because they can use Twitter and their phones, right? But they're not really that technical. They're users of technology and they're not necessarily creators. And many of them have never thought of themselves as ever being able to be creators. And these are people who are interested in technology as tools, but they don't know quite necessarily how to always use those. So this is what my class looks like this semester. I have four men and the rest are women. And that comes with, uh, you know, that's a mixed bag. It's good because we have so many women in this class that are trying to be more technical. I'm teaching them HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and that's fantastic. And, uh, but you know, they come with things that like, I, maybe I'm not good at math, or maybe I can't do this, or maybe it's broken, so therefore there must be something wrong with me. They come with some of these social barriers and cultural barriers that you have to help them to get over. So this is what they think is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty sure that this is what I'm saying. <laughs> you're just looking up stuff on Google, or you're debugging, or you're trying to fix something, and then most of the time, what happens <laughs> is that it doesn't work. So here's an example. Uh-oh, uh-oh, no. Ah, okay. Not working, right? That's what it does most of the time. Also, not working. <laughs> That's really, uh, to the point where you might say, or not available. Uh, but you might say that this is inherent to technology in general, that if you're going to work in code, if you're going to work where you're typing stuff in and the computer's going to interpret or translate it or present it, that you have to be able to be a really great problem solver. Because if you're not a great problem solver, you're not going to be able to get over these failures. So it's all about getting stuck <laughs> and not taking it personally, right? And so we talk a lot in teaching and learning about uh, scaling the complexity of projects in our class, starting with a simpler project, making it more complex, starting with uh, s scaffolding the learning throughout the semester. But what we don't necessarily remember is that we also have to, especially with these non-technical stu students, we have to scale the failure, okay? So we have to teach them how to fail and how to recover. So I'm gonna give you really quickly here, since we only have a few minutes, I'm going to give you my five tips for adding failure to your classroom. First thing is to introduce it right away. Don't wait. Introduce it on the first day, the second day. For me, that usually involves making them debug something and stomping around the room like Godzilla and saying, okay, you fixed it, you got the green, great, I'm going to break it for you. Oh, I want you to break your friends now. You have to introduce it quickly and make that part of the class, that this is just the way it is. It's not you, it's just part of the process. So that they don't start taking it personally, right? Two, you wanna scaffold your technical projects. And we all do this, right? We all do uh, you know, some sort of demonstration or tutorial. And, you know, and there's no risk of failing in the tutorial, right? There's directions, you're talking them through it. And I usually see this as an opportunity to talk about workflow and an opportunity to give them a sense of scope for the project. And the part that we sometimes forget is that we really need to give them an exercise in between so that they can transfer that learning so that they're working in class on a project that's similar but not maybe quite the same, different content, maybe something's a little changed, so that they get that sort of safe zone, right? We often send them off to do this as homework, but I think it's important to try to do it in class when you can. Because then when you get to the assignment, they've done everything two or three times, low risk of epic failure, right? How many times do you give them a technical assignment and they just, you, they turn it in and you can't grade it because they've, they've completely failed? I, I try to help them not get to that point. The third is to make mistakes, and I know that that's easier for me than it might be for you all, but uh, <laughs> what you want to do is try to introduce mistakes into your own work uh, when you can, to show them where things go wrong, where you go wrong, because you're not perfect either. There's always some issue with code. The fourth thing is to find and solve problems and turn them, make it into a game. So some, uh, some ways that I do this is I have them rank resources. I have them go look up something in the documentation and tell me, well, which one was the most helpful to you and why? Why was it helpful? Why was this other one confusing? I have them evaluate coded tools. 
Go find a Lightbox plugin. Tell me how easy or hard that was to install and what, uh, what was the problem with it. I do a lot of, how would I do scavenger hunts, right? And a lot of times I just have them fix the poor, sad, broken code because they love seeing bad examples. They love that because it helps them to feel confident in their own skills and, uh, and seeing good things and bad, bad things is just as important as seeing good things. And lastly, you have to have them practice failing and then recovering over and over and over again during class and during the semester. Because that iteration is what, it, what you do as a programmer, it's what you do as a developer, it's what you do as a web designer. You have to practice over and over and each time you run into an issue, you have to not be able to just stop and throw up your hands but go, okay, what am I gonna do? What test am I gonna do? How am I gonna solve this problem? So non-technical students seem to have this idea that coding is very rigid and, okay, they think it's very rigid but in reality it's information driven, it's creative, it's empowering, but you have to get them past the point where they know the basics so that they can put it together in a creative way. You want it to be fun. You want them to have that reaction <laughs> instead of instead of, you know, one of crying and disappointment and sadness. And true story, chocolate chip cookies were created at, by a mistake. She didn't have any chocolate, so she used this baker's chocolate, she made Toll House chocolate chip cookies. So mistakes can be a good thing. So what you wanna do, you wanna make handling, getting stuck part of the process, and so that you get these students to be self-sufficient as soon as possible, so that they can have fun with this, and that they think technology is something they can do, and that's it. Thank you very much.